Good morning. It's wonderful to see you. To find a warm place. That's, that's pretty cool right there this morning. Uh, because uh, you need to find a warm place if you're going to survive this morning. And this is a great place to be. And I want to welcome you.
refrain one more time a cappella. It's a joy and a privilege to uh, have Caitlin Moore with us today. Um, she's one of these kids who work with kids, and uh, we have supported we have supported you. I don't know for a couple of years. I'm not sure exactly how many years. And uh, she is currently in the Penn State community, working with uh, Christian discipleship ministry there with students at Penn State. And uh, unfortunately, you don't have the whole morning, but you have a few minutes. So, Katie, it's yours. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> oh, wow, that was such a nice greeting. <laughs> it's good to be here. Um, it's, it's been so long since I've been able to, like, present in a church. So, you guys are kind of, like, the first in a long time. So, um, it's a pleasure. Um, so... I just wanted to present something that is kind of nuanced to my season of life right now. And it's kind of the question of why is college ministry worth it? <laughs> um, what is it about college ministry that continues to make me super excited and going with, with passion um, and giving up a lot of other things um, in order to do this as a full-time job? So that question really applies that there's a cost and there are three bittersweet um, distinctives about campus ministry um, that, I'm, that I want to talk about. And these bittersweet things, um, I'm going to talk about why the sweetness overwhelms the bitterness of them. So <laughs> the first one is campus ministry is transient, um, basically meaning that people come and they go. Um, it's not like I'm planting myself down and I get to know people throughout my life. They're, they remain with me. Um, it's more like I have one to four years with them. <laughs> and, um, but this is a really sweet thing, too, because it means that I get to meet hundreds and hundreds of people. <laughs> and I get to um, really intercede um, into their lives and um, sow seeds. So um, this slide up here shows some seeds. Uh, we're mainly a sowing seeds ministry, um, and we do get to see fruit. And sometimes we don't. Um, but as we minister to students, um, we, uh, we really get to the heart of um, what their treasure is. And um, no matter what they treasure, um, that's something that th that's a desire that they're going to carry with them wherever they go in the world. And um, if that treasure is Christ, that's not something that can be destroyed. And um, as Jesus says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. It's also the same flipped. Uh, wherever your heart is, <laughs> wherever you go, um, that treasure will be too. And if it's a treasure that can't be taken away, um, it's going to be with you wherever you go. So I think that's a blessing, uh, the transient ministry. Um, those arrows represent people moving forward um, and still being really important to me and me being important to them. Um, but that's just the kind of ministry that this is. Um, secondly, um, campus ministry is multicultural um, in more ways than one. So usually when we hear the word multicultural, we think of the world. Um, and that is true. So that's the first thing I'm going to touch on. <laughs> um, in Acts 1.8, uh, Jesus gives his disciples the Great Commission in a way of saying, Jerusalem you know, your place here, Judea, Samaria, a place further away and out of your comfort zone. Um, and he even goes to all the way to the ends of the earth. Um, I made a little diagram, and that's the diagram to your left of kind of what Jesus, a great commission is. Go out, make disciples of all nations. Um, in the college campus ministry, what's amazing is that and even the ends of the earth come in to one single point. <laughs> and it's amazing the opportunities that I have to meet people. Um, one, of the, one of the most recent conversations I've had with, stu with international students was about the differences between 
um, Islam and Christianity. All of the uh, students in here were, were Muslim except for one student uh, who grew up in Morocco um, that I was talking with in this conversation. But there was also a student from Oman, a student from Azerbaijan, and a student from Syria. Um, and we're all talking. So I think I just wanted to ask you guys, have you ever had gospel conversations with someone from Oman? You can like raise your hand. I would like love to talk with you because, yeah, I really care about this person. <laughs> okay, do you know what Azerbaijan is? Have you, do you know what that is? Yay, okay, some people know it's a country. <laughs> uh, Muslim majority country. <laughs> and um, has anyone met someone from Syria? Cool. It's, th there's not that many people from Syria in college campuses. Um, but we were able to have a conversation. Um, I would love to share more about students' stories, but because of my limited time, that's a lot better for one-on-one -on -one conversations or, you know, um, just if you want to know more about some of these students, I would love, love, love to tell you about our conversations. Um, another way that it's mo multicultural is even just within Pennsylvania, um, there's a student that um, I call Stella whenever I'm talking about her, <laughs> um, who is from Pennsylvania. And she comes from a very different culture in Pennsylvania. She grew up isolated her whole life. Um, her parents only ever holding down the job of prostitution and her only ever being the one to work for her family. Um, Co-signed for her parents um, to have their house and to hold on to it. Um, was constantly loaning her parents' money. Is not a Christian. Um, and so when she got to college, she saw this as like an, an amazing miracle. Um, she has a learning disability, um, a reading disability, so I got her a special Bible <laughs> for speakers of English as their second language, and she's found that to be really helpful. And actually, she's not the only student who has this sort of story. There's actually another student um, who did become a Christian last year, um, who I also gave a Bible like this to that she finds as helpful. Um, but this creates all sorts of obstacles because with people who have grown up in trauma like this from childhood to you know, their late teenage years, early adulthood, I'm coming into that and sharing the gospel, and sometimes it's just too much to think about their life completely changing because it's the best it's ever been. And coming to Jesus means that they'll have to give up some things, and actually really everything. Um, so that can be really hard even if they want to become Christians. And, out and out at Altoona, there's a lot of students like this who just have really traumatic pasts, and that's something I've been realizing. Um, and so this kind of goes into my third point, uh, campus ministry is a coming-of-age context, um, meaning they're kind of in between, you know, they're adults when they arrive, they're legal adults, but then they're transitioning into adulthood. And that is um, hard a lot of the time because the things that people struggle with, um, I was just going to post something on my blog before coming here, and I didn't wrap up and conclude it in time to actually post it. But um, I had just come from Japan last week. I was in Japan for only 10 days. And when I came back, students were like, there's so much happened when you were gone. <laughs> and that's just like what it's like in campus ministry. And the things that they're going through is, is so much coming of age stuff. Um, there are so many factors that are changing. And I wish I had time to kind of um, summarize some of those things, but I will be posting them on my blog. So if you're interested in hearing about that, you can talk with me, or you can also just check out my blog at caitlinsupdates.online. Um, but this coming of age context is, is so interesting because, you know, as kids, you know, there's, there's health, or there's energy at least, and there's time, um, but there's not really money. <laughs> And in adulthood, there's like money, but there's, and there's energy, but there's not really time. Um, and the college students are kind of intersecting this bit of like, yeah, they um, don't have time, and they also don't have money. <laughs> they just have their energy. So they're really thinking about what is worth it? Like, is Jesus worth it? Is, is he worth the cost? Is he worth the investment of my energy um, while all these other things are happening, while all the, while I'm having basically a mental breakdown, which happens to like all the college students. Um, 
And because I'm a full-time campus worker, it's also an everyday opportunity to intersect while they're away from their parents to be just someone coming in and being like, yeah, I can, I can help you process through some of your loan issues or I can help you learn how to get a checkbook and write a check because you've never done that before or I can help you get your driver's license or um, I can show you that, you know, even though you haven't experienced a relationship like this yet and it might seem really good, there's a lot of big warning signs that this relationship is not good. So I'm able to kind of like come in um, and be a trusted person. There is one student who's a Christian who um, has a hard time being vulnerable and weak, especially her freshman year. Now she's a junior, and she's had a really hard place with, her, with one of her close friends, who's different than her, very different from her. But they're both Christians, and she's like, I just want to like escape and run away. And, and I told her, like, you know what? I know this is reminding of you of some of your worst memories from like long ago, but this sort of thing is gonna keep coming up. You can't really escape from this because there'll be another situation like this in the future, I'm sure of it, that you'll wanna escape again, but you can enter in and you can, in a sense, reconcile and really beat what is going on in your heart and just be vulnerable with this person. Tell her that you know this has been hurtful and she goes, I'm never vulnerable. I'm only vulnerable with my mom and you. <laughs> and so it's just, I don't know, it's, it's hard being in that kind of situation sometimes, but it's also uh, a big sweetness of the ministry. So that's what I have <laughs> to share with you all. Thank you for uh, supporting this ministry. If you would like to learn more, if you would like to individually support, please uh, talk with me. I have $100 a month left to raise to meet this month's minimum. I'm in a big support raising stage right now, and um, I like actually like need to raise funds in order to continue. So if this seems so valuable to you that you would like to invest into it yourself, um, please come and talk to me, and I'm so thankful. And the name of the group that you serve under, what is your ministry group? Oh, sorry, it's called Disciple Makers. Disciple Makers? Yeah. Um, you know, we give money to missions. You give money to missions. We earmark it to missions. We have a missions conference in March. And, uh, you know, between times, or you may put money in the offering each week, and you may kind of forget, or you may wonder, I uh, wonder actually what this does, or what does this accomplish. And Katie, you are an example of where our money goes. And so I just want to encourage you and and just remind you as in your mission giving we're not giving to quote missions we're giving to people like katie who um, are actually in places in lives serving and witnessing and so forth i want to pray for you before you go thank you heavenly father for katie's uh, ch opportunity for her to be here with us and we just thank you for your love we thank you that she can share that love in a very unique environment and a very rewarding place where, as she pointed out to us, people are actually thinking about this very issue of what is worthwhile in life, what is important, who am I, where am I going, what kind of goals do I want to have for my life. And in that setting here is the gospel being presented to them in its fullness, in its entirety, not simply a plan of escape from some penalty but of the demands of Jesus of discipleship and of of the message that says look lay down your cross take up your cross lay down everything else take up your cross and follow me pray that you'll bless her pray that you'll provide for the needs that she has and that she is currently trying to raise funds for and uh, just affirm and fill her heart and soul in every way in Jesus holy name we pray amen thank you so much for coming here I think we could give her some applause. Hey, I heard we were supposed to be doing a Thanksgiving skit. Who told you that? You did. Oh, well, uh, I'm really not prepared. Um, I guess I forgot. I for uh, are you sure? Maybe I just said something about Christmas. 
no, no, no. What you said was, they want a Thanksgiving skit, get ready, Katie. And then I didn't hear anymore. So I figured, I'm here, you're here, it's almost Thanksgiving, let's just do one. Sure. Uh, what, what do you say to a turkey that limps? I don't know. Wobble, wobble. <laughs> okay, okay. What did the turkey with a limp say when he saw the farmer walking towards the barn with a hatchet? Oh, it sounds like a good one. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. He says... Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> but that was before he got arrested. Arrested? Yeah, for foul play. <laughs> Hey, did you hear about the turkey that... Uh, whoa, whoa, stop. Is this going to be our skit, just us doing turkey jokes? Well, you caught me off guard. I guess, I mean, Thanksgiving, turkey's just the first thing I thought about. Uh, do you have a different thought? Duh. We're in church. Of course I had a different thought. Okay. Shopping. <laughs> Black Friday, that steal of a deal. Shopping, of course, of course. Thanksgiving is a religious holiday and shopping is a religious experience. I should have thought of this myself. <laughs> so you wanna, go, you wanna go shopping when this service is over? Sure do. Mm. Uh, you know, I saw a newspaper laying up here. We could, uh, we could look for deals, I mean, check the ads, see if we can find anything. Oh, okay, and I'll use my phone. I know several sites that we can look at. Oh, this, this is so exciting. I love Thanksgiving. Well, that's great. As a pastor, I am so glad to help people experience their religion. Okay. Uh, here's some stuff on sale at the uh, Walmart. I think you mean Walmart. Whatever. Uh, what exactly are you looking for? Happiness. Happiness. Would that be in toys or sporting goods? Oh, I know. I bet that would be in cosmetics. Hey, look here. Here's a cream that says it takes the wrinkles and cures the blues. It says you gotta apply it every hour because the troubles come up fast. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it sounds good. I, I don't like wrinkles, and I don't want troubles. Um, what's it called? It's called Comfort Cream. It says that uh, wrinkles give more surface area for the bugs to bite, and the bugs are actually little devils in disguise. And by stretching your skin, it doesn't give the little devils, uh, it kind of just discourages them. Oh, and it says that it smells like cabbage cooking, and the bugs don't like that smell. And they stay, oh, look, this is great. It says here, you buy one tube and you get half another tube free. That's, a, that's quite a Thanksgiving deal. I, get half a tube free? How are they going to give me half a tube? Uh, oh, it's here in the fine print. It says you must buy two tubes of comfort cream. So I guess... You buy two and they give you a whole, that's nice. They don't have to cut a tube in half right in the store that way. Yeah, well, I don't know, maybe. I mean, comfort cream sounds great, but I'm hoping to find happiness and I'm not sure that's gonna do it. So I'll put that on standby. Um, ooh, this looks interesting. Black Friday deal, one day only. Oh wow, half price. Uh, let's see. It's good for your ears, your tears, and your fears. Well, that sounds nice. Uh, 
That ought to make you happy. I mean, if you're not so afraid or you're not so sad. Uh, it's called Magic Mineral. Oh, listen to this. Scuba divers dig it from the ocean floor. Ooh. They hand it off to cliff divers <laughs> who hustle it directly to a mule train who haul it out to trucks who scurry to the airport Shoot. where it is flown on ice in a vacuum under lock and key directly to the laboratory. I mean, I'm feeling happier already. Very impressive. Is there any uh, side effects to this stuff? Uh, it says here that it may cause moderate to severe hearing loss. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was supposed to be good for your ears. Oh yeah, it did say that. I get it. It makes you deaf. So you don't hear all the crummy news about all the crazy stuff. I mean, uh, if you don't know what ha what's happening, then you're not going to be so sad or afraid. That's genius, actually. You're, you, you don't worry about anything because you're ignorant. Oh, oh, look at this. You have to take out a life insurance policy in order to purchase <laughs> Magic Mineral. Uh, and they require you to keep it in a safe or a vault at your home. Is this stuff sold at the Crawl Mart? It's Walmart. And no, this ad is from that smoke shop downtown. Um, <laughs> Vaping Gape? Vaping Gape. Yeah, I, I guess you smoke it. Yeah, the smoke comes out your ears and stops <laughs> up your brain. Uh, of course you're happy, because you're brain dead. <laughs> You know, Katie, I have a better idea, and it's free. Really? It sort of worries me when you get an idea. <laughs> but I do like the free part. Well, instead of shopping for Thanksgiving, buying things we don't have, what if we actually noticed the things that we do have? You mean creams and minerals? Sure, you could start there. Okay, um, well, I do have some sour cream in my fridge. I like to put that on baked potatoes. And I have some cream of wheat in my cupboard. There you go, food. Oh, you want happiness. Just think about creamy peanut butter and jelly. Or, uh, oh. Creamy mashed potatoes with sausage gravy on them. Uh, soft, creamy cake icing. You know, all these nu nutritious, delicious, soft, creamy foods. And we have them. When we're hungry, we can eat them. Cream of broccoli soup. <laughs> that is comfort cream to me. I mean, I can definitely be thankful for food, but I... Don't think I have any minerals like that magic mineral. Well, uh, sure you do. Sure you do. Do you have a roof on your house? No, my house is just four walls. <laughs> of course I have a roof. It's a metal roof. Last I heard, those metals were called minerals. And not only the roof on your house, the windows you look out of, the car you drive, the room you drive on. That computer thing tells you where to go. They're all magic minerals. Oh, and I already have them. But I'm not looking for minerals. I'm looking for happiness. Well, uh, Oh, that's why all these ads are in the paper, Katie. That's why all these ads are in the paper. They're trying to make you think that you can be happy if you have more comfort cream or magic mineral. Okay, so what are you suggesting? That you just notice, pay attention to, appreciate the comfort that you already have, the comfort in the creams that you already have, or the magic in the minerals that you already have access to. So, being thankful can make me happy? Uh, being thankful just makes you thankful. But 
it seems like we cannot be happy unless we're thankful. At least it gets us started that direction. I mean, it seems like all the people who are unappreciative, they're always unhappy. It, it gives us a start in that direction. God has provided you with food and shelter and transportation. Cream and minerals. Okay. I, you know what? I just thought of another cream I have. What's that? My family and the friends that God has already given to me. I mean, I'm so thankful for them. And when I think about that, it does make me happy. Well, that's great. But how is your family like cream? Well, cream rises to the top. And they're the cream of the crop. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I want to say uh, thank you to the uh, other people who brought up, brought all these uh, canned goods, cereals, so forth. Brandon, may I have their thank you very much. Um, wait, 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 wait. I thought you asked me to preach today. Oh, not this again. <laughs> You're having a rough day, man. But Brandon, can you pull up my slide, please? No, I, wait a minute. Thanks. I want Thanksgiving. 
I don't, I don't know if this is going to work if you have the clicker. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> did I ask you to preach? Uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I am getting forgetful. <laughs> um, I got it. I'll preach this half, you preach to that half. <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to work, but OK. Uh, yeah, as long as I have my PowerPoint. Well, anyway, I, I, I need the PowerPoint. <laughs> You know, this could be like these sales, these auctions you go to where they have about four or five <laughs> auctioneers, and you just pick which one you listen to, and you just hang Wait, around them. If you're preaching to this side, and I'm preaching to this side, who's going to preach to the balcony? Well, who's up there? Oh, there's people up there. Well, I tell you what, if you're on this side, let's do an X with crisscross. If you're on this <laughs> side, you listen to him. If you're on this side, you listen to me. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is going to work. Well, we'll just have to we'll just have to make it work. But these poor these poor people back here, they don't. You know what I you know what I'd like to say. I would just like to say how happy or how grateful I am for these guys and women who sit back here and do these powerpoints because they never know what they're going to have to deal with and help us out. I just I just want to say thank you on this Thanksgiving Sunday, Brandon and all your cohorts. Thank you. You that know. is true. That is true. We are so thankful. They get here early. They prepare the slides, the order. They put up with shenanigans like this. I mean. What about the people, I'm thinking somebody else, Josh, people who get here in early, well, people who forget the PowerPoints. What about the guys who just help us with the computer? I mean, like the software. They get the stuff available and ready so that those people can actually put this up here. Uh, I don't even know if I know who all you are, but at times I know some of you, Greg Elliott and others, I know <laughs> you get hold of that computer and you do strange stuff. And I want to say thank you because that enables Josh and me to stand up here and go back and forth over who gets PowerPoint. Especially when we, <laughs> yeah, especially when we come in Sunday morning and say, oh, I want to change this. But you know what? I, I am really thankful for the guys. I still think you're making that part up. <laughs> I'm really thankful for the guys who sit behind the other machine, the video recording, the editing, you know, oh, making no sure everyone here. looks good. I mean, they're back there too, so I would say thank you to them. Well, what about the other place over here? There's another desk over there. Is that Ethan sitting there? Um, I mean, these sound desk guys, they get in here early. I mean, I see them up here. They come up here. They prepare microphones. And uh, they do all, all kinds of stuff to prepare to get ready. They, you know, they pay attention to the sound. They mix it up. And, and then what? I got another thought here, Josh. What if they did all that, the sound desk people, and they put all this stuff up here, and they gave us our mics, and then nobody shows up to sing? That is or true. Or what if nobody even, like, they made all this preparation, and nobody even showed up to play any of the instruments? The Music uh, and Worship Commission. So grateful for their planning, their scheduling, the praise teams that come in and play, the music services that we have put together, the choirs, the different groups. So there's so a thankful. commission that does all that. There so, is. Wow. There is. You know, speaking of music, did you hear about this guy that they, he learned to play piano by ear? And he worked really hard at it, and he learned to play by ear, and then sometimes later found out that it was so much easier to play with his fingers. <laughs> Did you hear about him? Did you hear about the four-man rock group that doesn't play music? They don't play music. They call themselves Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> if we're going to talk about the music commission, I would like to take a moment and, and just single out the property commission. Because, you know, we have a music commission and they provide us with a lot of music and wonderful stuff. But the property commission, they make the whole building work. Mm. I mean, lights and heat and uh, uh, not just the microphones, but the cleaning and the maintenance and the removing of the snow and the air conditioning in the summertime and the, the trash removal and the plumbing and the elevator. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the just keeping the elevator work is, is full is full time. And I I just want to say to all of you people who help in the property commission who 
come in here and spend long hours behind the scenes, and you work and you plan from bottom of my heart, from bottom of our heart. We want to say thank you for the work that you do. And that, you, know. And you know, they do all that so that children can come to Sunday school, vacation Bible school, Wednesday evening groups. I mean, and the Children's Commission are the ones that put all of those things together. They work to be creative so the parents can bring their kids in. I mean, as a parent, I know this is true. Bring their kids in, uh, and we know that they are loved, that they're safe, that they're learning about God. I mean, it's amazing. Well, the Children's, the children's Commission are, are wonderful, and, and it's, it's great to have the children, but they couldn't even be here if the adults didn't come. That's right. And there is, there is a, a, an adult commission that works hard to prepare and program and supply different situations and all, all sorts of resources for the ministry to adults, of Bible studies, fellowship groups, service groups like ladies with their sewing machines downstairs that uh, are just buzzing around all the time making things. Um, the Adult Commission really tries to inspire and enable adults to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I, I'm very, very grateful for the people who are willing to take that on, that narrow thing, you know, to mm. the adults. Mm. I'm really thankful for the Youth Commission, uh, the, the people that gather together, uh, you know, well, our youth, the kids are who are in the process of becoming adults. This commission works on vision, teaching, challenging the faith of these young people. I'm thankful for our youth who do the, uh, the, the breakfast stuff in the morning each Sunday. You know, you know, this makes me think, though, I keep, we keep hearing the word teaching in classes. Who does all of this teaching? Who does the teaching? Yeah. Oh, it's the most wonderful group of volunteers. Do you realize, Josh, that we have over 40 people on Wednesday night and Sunday morning who just are teachers, just teaching the kids or teaching the young people or teaching the adults? between 40 and 50 uh, individuals who, uh, it, you know, they study, they prepare, they teach. Um, I, you know, here's, a, here's a, a, a verse of scripture that I would like to read to the teachers and, and, and a way, as a way of saying thank you. We thank God continually because when you received the word of God, those of you who are teachers, you heard from us, you accepted it, not only as the word of man, but not as the word of man, but actually as it is the word of God, and it's at work in all you believe. And you come in here, and you take the bread of life, and you break it down in little pieces so that we can digest it, we can understand it. Here's another verse that I want to say, we want to say to you who are teachers. We thank God enough. We cannot thank God enough because of all the joy that we have in the presence of God for you. Speaking of joy, do we have a joy committee? Yeah. The greeters. These people that go out here and just smile. Oh, the nursery workers. These people that go downstairs and sit and they, they feed the babies and they cuddle the babies and they change the poopy diapers for the babies. <laughs> and it's just all pure joy. Uh, <laughs> it's just wonderful. It better be. Well, what about the folks who count the money? That sounds joyful to me. Those on the finance commission who monitor and budget and make sure salaries and bills are paid. And most joyful of all on this money thing is giving. Yes. Who gives the money? All of you folks uh, who have a grateful heart to God and a burden for the lost and love for Christ's body, the church, even this church. How thankful we are uh, like Paul writing to the Philippians. Can we read this, Josh? I will. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And here's another thing that Pastor Paul said to the church at Rome, his congregation there. Listen to this. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, who I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel, is my witness. How constantly I remember you all 
in my prayers. Uh, this brings me the, to mind to our missions commission mm. as a church because they're always staying in touch with people like Katie and people who are around the world in different places. And they're keeping us aware and bringing updates and conferences and helping us financially in short-term trips, making sure that money's available for that, reminding us that our faith is known in all different parts of the world. Uh, how thankful I am, we are, for those of you who serve on the missions commission. Well, how do people end up on these different commissions? Oh, that's another group that I'm very thankful for. It's called the Appointment Committee. They, they pray, they call, they listen to stories, and sometimes excuses, and they consider talents, and they just keep working and working to fill the leadership needs of this congregation. Well, here's what I would say to those, to every person I see Todd over here on the VBS Commission. I always thank God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus, in him, you have been enriched in every way, in knowledge and in speaking. You confirmed our testimony about you. You do not lack any spiritual gift as you wait for Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong and blameless until the end. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus, our Lord, is faithful. And to the committee that plans and pulls off picnics and fellowship events, I want to say this, I always thank God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of all good things given to us in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement. Well, there's the library committee and the kitchen committee and the technology committee, <laughs> and the safety and security committee, and the guiding hands preschool committee. These words are for you, all of you who are on any of those committees. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers, and we continually remember before God your work produced by faith, prompted by love, and you, your endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thinking of another New Testament reference that I must read to those on the Personnel Relations Commission. It talks about trials uh, that they have to endure, appropriate, <laughs> because yeah. this commission has to deal with you and me. <laughs> but they not only seek to keep a positive relationship between personnel and people, they even help us to figure out insurance options, which uh. is a huge nightmare. Uh, and they deal with all the child protective issues this involves many, many hours. And so I'd say this from 2 Thessalonians. We always thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. The love, every, the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. Among God's church, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. And here's one for the Spiritual Care Commission. These men and women meet every month. In fact, they're meeting today, I believe, <laughs> unless I hear differently. 3.30 this afternoon. That, should, that got missed in bulletin. And these are not short meetings. And we spend much time praying and, for people, and they, they discuss some gnarly situations that people get involved in in their lives. And they offer advice and counsel and love, and they hand out encouragement, and sometimes they hand out discipline to folks. And they are the spiritual leaders of this congregation. They are the, the, they are the, the deacons. They are the overseers. They are the elders. And they provide money to people in a very confidential manner. I want to say this. We want to say this to you folks on Spiritual Care Commission. Yes, we always thank God for you, brothers. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through his sanctifying work of the Spirit, through belief in truth. And he called you to this through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So stand firm and hold to the teachings that we passed on to you. You know, you mentioned the property commission earlier and it keeps itself busy tearing up the parking lot and mowing and sawing down trees and everything. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, they don't decorate the walls or windows oh, or prepare don't. the flowers. they did this too. <laughs> the communion table, no. That's a group called the Altar Guild. 
These gals put up the trees and lights and then take them back down. We appreciate them. Oh, yes. And the Christmas program with the kids, that's another committee. They plan and they practice. Their goal isn't just to decorate, but to, to make a program that keeps the message of Christmas in front of us. We are so grateful for you. We express it in these New Testament words. I thank God who I serve as my forefathers did, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I have been reminded of your sincere faith. I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. Well, I thought of somebody else that we have, Josh, and they're called secretaries, and they help to translate our ideas <laughs> into reality, and they read your scribble. <laughs> And they speak the language of transients, and uh, they talk to vendors on the phone, and it's amazing. They can be standing there smiling, talking to a vendor, drop kick the copier at the same moment. I mean, it's called, it's called multitasking, I guess. But uh, we so appreciate these ladies with the attitude of servanthood. They don't just love our church. They love the Lord, and it comes through, and... Uh, we just uh, are, are so very greatly appreciate, appreciative of them. Um, and that also makes me think uh, about the janitors who are also here in the building a lot of times when we're not here on Sunday morning. We have janitors who take care of and keep our church building clean. And they are outstanding. And they are conscientious. And they are friendly. And they are uh, faithful. And they are a great blessing. They are a great blessing to all of us. You know, we didn't even mention the administrative board. Those of you who serve, uh, whether uh, commission chairman or congregational representatives, we have the greatest gratitude for you. You know, we've all heard stories of churches that their board meetings are like a modern day version of the Hatfields and McCoys. That's not the way it is at our board meeting. I mean, we might not always vote unanimously, but we well, are. We don't? We, no, I, I mean, it's happened. It's happened. <laughs> but we are definitely united. Uh, whether we disagree on an issue, we're still united in the mission of this church. Our thanksgiving includes a deep gratitude and respect and gladness for those who serve on the board. We might have left somebody out uh, on this thanksgiving list, and if so, I want to apologize for that, but I will not leave anybody out in this statement. And that is that we have chosen to use this sermon time to do what the greatest missionary of all times did when he was able to think about and travel among the churches that he had begun or he had started. Um, and that is to say to his people, as we say to every one of you in this building today, we thank God for you. We thank God for your salvation. We thank God for your service, for your interest. We thank God for your commitment your finances, your money. We thank God for your time and your talent and your witness and your burden and your love for the Lord and also for this family of believers that we call Otterbein. And Josh, I'd like for you to read this with me as we close because this is for all of you and it's from our hearts mm. and it's just an expression of our, our feeling as leaders of this church to you this is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, congregation appreciation, whatever. <laughs> we always, always thank, thank God, God when we, we pray, pray for, for you, you because we have heard of your, of your faith, faith in Christ Jesus, Jesus and the love, love you, have you have for all the saints all. springing from, from the hope that is, that is stored up for you in heaven and that, that you already heard, heard about in the word, word of truth, truth the, the gospel that has come to you. To you. All over, All over the world, the world it is, is bearing fruit and, and growing, is growing, just, just as it has been among you since the day you heard about it and understood, understood God's, God's grace in, in all its truth. truth. We don't need to applaud. This is him and I saying thank you. Thank you. May God... We thank God for you both. <laughs> <laughs> We're going
we're going to sing a hymn. I can't believe it. It's 22. <laughs> All those who predicted doom, <laughs> I surprised you. Two things. Um, if you know anybody that you feel like could benefit from some food or would appreciate the gift of some food, we're going to be handing this out, giving this out. And rather than just take it to the food pantry, we'd like to just give it to some local family. So if you have a suggestion, please let me know. Secondly, tonight, 6 o'clock, just down the road here at the Assembly of God, it's going to be a community Thanksgiving service. And uh, I invite you to come, encourage you to come. It's going to be a cold night, but you can get in a warm place and get with the Spirit of the Lord and some warm people, warm-hearted people. You'll be glad you did. So I invite you to come to that. Father in heaven, we thank you that we could be here together in this time of worship. But much more importantly than our being together is whether you have received our glory and our praise. Whether we have transferred from ourself unto you all that is good all that is blessed, all that is wholesome and wonderful. We thank you that you've given us so much and we transfer the glory of it all to you. We pray for the needs of folks who are still dealing with some monster issues and pray that you will help and heal and supply each need that they have. Send us on our way. Send us to the classes. Send us into uh, the world in which we go filled with uh, a, a sense of security and of, of solid of solidity that says no matter what comes, hat, what comes, comes along, no matter what potholes might be in front of me, I know who I am and I know whose I am and those things will never change. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. He has purchased me with his blood and it is to his glory and in his name that I live my life. We pray this this morning in his name.